What's good, fam? Law 26. Keep your hands clean. You must seem a paragon of civility and efficiency. Your hands are never soiled by mistakes and nasty deeds. Maintain such a spotless appearance by using others as scapegoats and cat's paws to disguise your involvement. <laughs> Let's look at it. Another episode of the life of the fake and phony. I mean, 48 laws of power through lens of truth. So you must seem, seem, not actually be, but appear to be, just look like, resemble, come across as a paragon, a person or thing regarded as a perfect example of a particular quality of civility and efficiency. So you gotta look like you're really good and you're really good at being really good, but you don't actually have to put your attention inside of the field of competition and comparison on being good. And it's crazy because this is the easiest of all the presentations because you were created good. So to be good, all you have to do is operate as you were designed. Mystery solved. Of course, inside of the illusionary presentation, your hands are never soiled with mistakes because if you do make a mistake, you just pretend you didn't or you blame it on somebody else to justify what it was that you did because you had to. Of course, you're never responsible for the nasty deeds, even the nasty deeds that you carry out. The ones that you imagined, said that you wouldn't do, but got so upset that you eventually present it. <laughs> Your hands are never soiled by mistakes and nasty deeds, not because you're not responsible for the two, but oftentimes because you won't take accountability, not even publicly. I'm not talking about public accountability. What I'm saying is you don't even have the ability to disconnect from your delusions, see the truth and fact of reality, and take accountability within yourself alone with no one but you and your creator that you were wrong, you were misguided, you were off path, and now you're aware and ready to return to truth. It's just that simple. But you rather pretend that you're never wrong. And if you pretend that you're never wrong, then that means you never accept correction. You continue to defend yourself against correction. Correction is not an attack against you. Correction is an attack against what is attacking you. But because you still dodging accountability, you keep attacking the people who are attacking your attackers. Leave your allies alone. Stop defending yourself against those who are on your team. There is nothing hurtful that they can say. There is nothing hurtful that they can do. If you would stand firm on your identity, you wouldn't care so much about who they think you are based on the calculation and judgments that they have of your actions that they can see, you won't even care. Remember, in the world of shadows and forms, you don't need actual substance, you just need the appearance. So, 48 Laws of Power tells us to maintain such a spotless appearance. How? By using others as scapegoats. Me doing something and blaming them me concocting a narrative that implicates them and leaves me out so that what I am responsible for destroying I take no accountability for use others as scapegoats use others as cat paws cat paws are people who are used to carry out unpleasant heinous acts 
crash dummies in our language <laughs> to disguise your involvement. But remember, the people in front of you are a reflection of you. So if the people in front of you have an absence of awareness to the truth of their identity and the abundance that they were designed for, you can bet your last dollar or your first that you and them belong to the same club. Y'all subscribe to the same system of belief. You don't have a clue either. You're under the impression that you can design and craft and recreate yourself just like them. I love when Robert Greene say stuff like this because it's so true in the worst way. Our good name and reputation depends more on what we conceal than what we reveal. Inside of the game of comparison and competition, your reputation has been highly connected with the things that you have omitted and chose not to speak on. You have chose to move geographically. You've switched jobs, occupations. You've switched housing arrangements. You've switched spouses. <laughs> Friend groups, support systems, all of that. Just to start with a fresh canvas just for another opportunity to pretend to be who you haven't been elsewhere and let somebody speak on who you've been elsewhere and they just hating they're only hating if when they speak about who you were elsewhere it goes against who you have grown to operate as today other than that they are just raising the awareness of the people around you. Robert Greene says everyone makes mistakes, but those who are truly clever manage to hide them and make sure someone else is blamed. A convenient scapegoat should always be kept around for such moments. Just keep you a liability with you. Just keep you somebody around that just may cost you everything that you've strived to achieve in hopes that one day they'll be present when you're trying to save face and guard your reputation by pretending amongst people who have all made mistakes that you are mistake free. <laughs> Do you know how aggravating it is to be around people like this that are never wrong? Let me ask you a question and I want you to be honest, not with me because I can't even hear you. Be honest with yourself. Where are your treasures? Wherever your treasures are, there your heart is. So it's an important question for us to answer. We have to know. Have your treasures and has your heart been focused and set on true substance, which is inside the spirit realm, inside the mind, inside of you? Your relationship with I am, the truth, reality, facts? Or has your attention been spent has your focus been, has your treasures been in the physical realm of form and, sh and shadow focused on appearance? Do you wake up in the morning and run to the mirror to see what you look like in the physical? Or do you wake up in the morning and meditate to see what you look like in the spirit realm? Have you been focused on the true substance of yourself or have you been focused on the appearance of yourself? I can tell you right now, every single law of the 48 laws of power is solely focused on appearance because it is aimed at helping you win a game inside of the world of forms and shadows where everything is but an appearance. Nothing is real. All is illusionary and will disappear and no longer be at some point. Understanding the workings of power and the importance of, of appearances, shop around for the most convenient head 
and have it served up immediately. Understand, in the realm of competition and comparison, form and shadow, in the illusionary realm, driven by egos, where you become fully delusional and you are unstable in all of your ways because you have become split and divided, you are double-minded, you are not to be trusted, there is no presentation and no extension of genuine love coming from you, not even towards the people that you carry affinity and strong feelings towards, not even the people t that you're afraid to lose, that you have written into your lifelong narrative that you don't want to disappear off of the stage of your continuing act. You do understand you didn't need anybody to tell you to go blame somebody for your mistakes. This is what you did as a child when someone tried to correct you for your mistakes to keep you from doing it again. You defended yourself from somebody who was trying to help you. And you oftentimes blamed somebody else. You went to the schoolhouse and told the teacher that your dog ate your homework because you knew that the teacher could call your mama and call your daddy and they would say that you ain't do it or they ain't eat it but you knew your dog couldn't talk. Nobody needed to tell you this. Nobody needed to teach you to blame other people for your mistakes and pretend to be perfect. Nobody needed to tell you to be phony and try to make it seem like everybody else was a little more irresponsible than you. Nobody needed to counsel you in appearances. Power does not depend on, appear on appearance. You can appear to be weak, and those who appear to be weak are actually strong because they're not out trying to fight to appear to be a certain way. The people who spend all day trying to look powerful are actually weak as hell. Say, so use a cat's paw. In the fable, the monkey grabs the paw of his friend. The cat and uses it to fish chestnuts out of the fire, thus getting the nuts that he craves without hurting himself. If the monkey wanted the nuts bad enough to use the cat's paw and burn the cat's paw to get the nuts for himself, he was no friend of anyone but his own desires and cravings. See, you are connected to a lot of people that you wouldn't even talk to if you had not calculated that they are taking you to the imagination that you have always carried for yourself. The imaginary destinations that you entertain and that you chase after keep you connecting to imaginary interpretations of who people are, what they can do, and what they are willing to extend to you in your pursuit. So you connect with them, pretend to be their friend, then fall out with them because they don't deliver what you expected, not even what they said they would give. <laughs> we're gonna look at this piece of a sim real quick and we're gonna slide and let them shoot missiles for the rest of the night. The whole spirit cannot punish sin. Sin is to miss the mark. Mistakes. He recognizes and would correct them all as God entrusts him to do. So if he corrects all mistakes, then how could one find themselves outside of the favor at the end of the narrative when you're going to be sent to heaven or hell? But sin he knows not, nor can he recognize mistakes that cannot be corrected. For a mistake that cannot be corrected is meaningless to him. Mistakes are for correction. And they call for nothing else. A mistake does not call for a scapegoat. A mistake does not call for a cat's paw. A mistake calls for correction. That's what it's designed for. You make mistakes so that you can be corrected by I am who is always present 
with you and sees you as perfectly created and beloved and wants you to operate in accordance with your design. So when you make a mistake, when you sin, when you miss the mark, you're corrected. And the correction is a gift. It's, it's something good. All your life, you've been told you're going to be punished if you make a mistake. God going to get you. God going to separate himself from you. He going to remove his hedge of protection from you. He going to allow the enemy to get... You make a mistake, and in love, the Father corrects you. It's simple as that. <laughs> what calls for punishment must call for nothing. Every mistake must be a call for love. What then is sin? What could it be but a mistake you would keep hidden? A call for help that you would keep unheard and thus unanswered. <laughs> In time, the whole spirit clearly sees the Son of God can make mistakes. On this, you share his vision. Yet you do not share his recognition of the difference between time and eternity. And when correction is completed, time is eternity. The whole spirit can teach you how to look on time differently and see beyond it, but not while you believe in sin. In error, yes, for this can be corrected by the mind, but sin is the belief that your perception is unchangeable and that the mind must accept as true what it is told through it. If it does not obey, the mind is judged insane. The only power that could change perception is thus kept impotent held to the body by the fear of change perception, which its teacher, who is one with it, would bring. As you've grown and you've matured, you have probably stopped trying to pretend so much that you don't make mistakes, but you do still try to hide the bulk of your mistakes. You'll let some of them show when somebody catches you red-handed, when it's something that you just can't push off on somebody else and act like you don't know what happened, you'll take it. You'll own up to it and try to be applauded for your maturity in owning your mistake. And don't let people attack you or don't let you feel attacked while trying to own up to your mistakes because you know how you get. You know you're going to get defensive. You know you're going to feel like they just carrying on and doing the most. <laughs> Not too much on you? I. <laughs> and you wake up every day and desperately try to uphold your appearance of being spotless. Even though you have not embraced the truth that you were created spotless and that the reality of yourself is no matter what you do in the body, you will remain spotless. You will always be seen true to your design by your creator. That's the only judgment you say you're worried about, right? <laughs> yeah. You know you'll be worried about how other people see you. And when correction is completed, time is eternity. So, at some point in our development of returning to the original state, there will be no separation in time and eternity. Well, we can be taught by the whole spirit that is within us how to see time differently and view life beyond it, but not while we believe in sin. And here, sin is defined as the belief that your perception, your misconceptions, your delusions, your imaginary world is unchangeable and that the mind must accept as true what it is being told through it. So here we are under the impression that the mind is in control and we must do what it is that we hear. And we know a ton of people that live there. Uh, I remember my days there. <laughs> Check this out. When you are tempted to believe that sin is real, remember this, 
if sin is real, both God and you are not. If creation is extension, the creator must have extended himself. And it is impossible that what is part of him is totally unlike the rest. If sin is real, God must be at war with himself. He must be split and torn between good and evil, partly sane and partly insane. For he must have created what wills to destroy him and has the power to do so. Is it not easier to believe that you have been mistaken than to believe in something so foolish as this? You say that God is good. You say that God is one. You say that God is whole. You say that God is love. But then you say that there are demons and there's witchcraft and there's demonic forces that have set out to destroy you that actually could succeed. You think that you could miss the mark in such a way that one day you stand before your creator and you get cast down into this place that was designed for your creator's top enemy, arch nemesis. <laughs> You've fallen all the way from sun to in, in, in king with a place in the palace to peasant and a op. Oh.